The Earth. Think it's solid as a rock. Our planet might seem fixed and rigid, but a closer look reveals that it is constantly shifting under our feet. Delve into the Earth's interior, learn about its tectonic plates and their movements, and discover how mountains, volcanoes, and earthquakes are formed. Scientists understand much about Earth's structural layers, the inner core, core, mantle, and crust. Yet there are still great mysteries to solve about our planet's inner workings. Mountain ranges tower to the sky. Oceans plummet to impossible depths. Earth's surface is an amazing place to behold. Yet even the deepest canyon is but a tiny scratch on the planet. To really understand Earth, you need to travel 6,400 kilometers, 3,977 miles, beneath our feet. Starting at the center, Earth is composed of four distinct layers. They are, from deepest to shallowest, the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, and the crust. Except for the crust, no one has ever explored these layers in person. In fact, the deepest humans have ever drilled is just over 12 kilometers, 7.6 miles, and even that took 20 years. Still, scientists know a great deal about Earth's inner structure. They plumbed it by studying how earthquake waves travel through the planet. The speed and behavior of these waves change as they encounter layers of different densities. Scientists including Isaac Newton, three centuries ago, have also learned about the core and mantle from calculations of Earth's total density, gravitational pull and magnetic field. Here's a primer on Earth's layers, starting with a journey to the center of the planet. A cutaway of Earth's layers reveals how thin the crust is when compared to the lower layers. Usk, the inner core. This solid metal ball has a radius of 1,220 kilometers, 758 miles, or about three quarters that of the moon. It's located some 6,400 to 5,180 kilometers, 4,000 to 3,220 miles, beneath Earth's surface. Extremely dense, it's made mostly of iron and nickel. The inner core spins a bit faster than the rest of the planet. It's also intensely hot. Temperatures sizzle at 5,400 deg Celsius, 9,800 deg Fahrenheit. That's almost as hot as the surface of the sun. Pressures here are immense, well over 3 million times greater than on Earth's surface. Some research suggests there may also be an inner, inner core. It would likely consist almost entirely of iron. The outer core. This part of the core is also made from iron and nickel, just in liquid form. It sits some 5,180 to 2,880 kilometers, 3,220 to 1,790 miles, below the surface. Heated largely by the radioactive decay of the elements uranium and thorium, this liquid churns in huge, turbulent currents. That motion generates electrical currents. They, in turn, generate Earth's magnetic field. For reasons somehow related to the outer core, Earth's magnetic field reverses about every 200,000 to 300,000 years. Scientists are still working to understand how that happens. The mantle, at close to 3,000 kilometers, 1,865 miles. Thick, this is Earth's thickest layer. It starts a mere 30 kilometers, 18.6 miles, beneath the surface. Made mostly of iron, magnesium, and silicon, it is dense, hot, and semi-solid, think caramel candy. Like the layer below it, this one also circulates. It just does so far more slowly. Near its upper edges, somewhere between about 100 and 200 kilometers, 62 to 124 miles underground, the mantle's temperature reaches the melting point of rock. Indeed, it forms a layer of partially melted rock known as the asthenosphere, as asthenosphere. Geologists believe this week, hot, slippery part of the mantle is what Earth's tectonic plates ride upon and slide across. The crust. Earth's crust is like the shell of a hard-boiled egg. It is extremely thin, cold, and brittle compared to what lies below it. The crust is made of relatively light elements, especially silica, aluminum, and oxygen. It's also highly variable in its thickness. Under the oceans, it may be as little as 5 kilometers thick. Beneath the continents, the crust may be 30 to 70 kilometers thick. Along with the upper zone of the mantle, the crust is broken into big pieces, like a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. These are known as tectonic plates. These move slowly, at just 3 to 5 centimeters per year. Plate tectonics In the early 1900s, 
the German scientist Alfred Wegener noticed that the coastlines of Africa and South America looked like they might fit together. He also discovered evidence that the same plant and animal fossils were found along the coasts of these continents, although they were now separated by vast oceans. In addition, he noticed that geologic formations, like mountain ranges, on the two continents also matched up. In 1915, Wegener published his book, The Origin of Continents and Oceans, suggesting that the Earth's continents were once joined together in one large mass. He called the original landmass, or supercontinent, Pangaea the Greek word for all the Earth. According to Wegener, over time Pangaea split apart and the different landmasses, or continents, drifted to their current locations on the globe. While other scientists of the time vehemently rejected Wegener's ideas, they became the basis for the development of the theory of plate tectonics, continents on the move. 200 million years ago Pangaea begins to break up and splits into two major landmasses Laurasia in the north, made up of North America and Europe and Gondwana in the south, made up of the other continents. 135 million years ago, Gondwana splinters further, the South America, Africa landmass separates from the Antarctica, Australia landmass. The Indian landmass breaks away from the Antarctica, Australia landmass. 65 million years ago, major rifting of Laurasia, with the North American landmass separating from Eurasia. South America and Madagascar separate from Africa. 50-40 million years ago Greenland separates from North America. Australia separates from Antarctica and moves north. The Indian landmass collides with Asia plate boundaries. The Earth's continents are constantly moving due to the motions of the tectonic plates. Closely examine the map below, which shows the 15 major tectonic plates. As you can see, some of the plates contain continents and others are mostly under the ocean. The type of crust that underlies the continents is called continental crust, while the type found under the oceans is called oceanic crust. Continental crust is thicker about 20 to 40 miles thick and usually older than oceanic crust, which is only 4 to 6 miles thick. All the plates have names, usually referring to landmasses, oceans, or regions of the globe where they are located. The border between two tectonic plates is called a boundary. All the tectonic plates are constantly moving very slowly around the planet, but in many different directions. Some are moving toward each other, some are moving apart, and some are sliding past each other. Because of these differences, tectonic plate boundaries are grouped into three main types. A convergent boundary occurs where two plates are pushing toward each other. Examples of convergent boundaries include the boundary between the Eurasian plate and the Indian plate at the Himalayas, a divergent boundary marks two plates that are moving apart from each other. The boundary between the Pacific and Antarctic plates, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, made up of the boundary between the North American and Eurasian plates in the North Atlantic, crossing Iceland, and the South American and the African plates in the South Atlantic. A transform boundary occurs where two plates slide past each other. Examples of transform boundaries include the boundary between the Pacific plate and the Australian plate, crossing New Zealand, the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate in California. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more. AWP Marine Science